Hello everyone, have you ever wanted to use a robotic arm in your analogic model? Robotic arms, driven by automatic algorithms and artificial intelligence, have become essential in various industries due to their increasing productivity, safety and minimal failure rate. In manufacturing, they are used in sectors like automotive, electronics, food, medical, metallurgy and textiles, performing tasks from assembly to fabric cutting. Their versatile applications highlight their transformative impact on modern industries. Well, the robotic arm library offers tools to model and simulate the dynamics and functionalities of robotic arms used in the manufacturing industry. So you can find this link in the description below. And here you can download this library. And you can check as well this blog to know more about this robotic arm. And you can click here and download. And then you can download this file, which is the only one. You can save the file. And now once in your model, you have to import this library in Analogic first. So you can click here at the very end of the palette and manage libraries you can add one library and select the library that you have already downloaded click ok and now you have your library here well it consists of two agents which is move by robot and robot and the help agent which is just a button that will lead you to this page, which is the blog. So the robot represents the 3D animation of the robot and this robotic arm consists of four parts. I'm going to drag and drop this robot to the model. Now you can see here the presentation of the robot. You can drag this, this robot in wherever you need this. I'm going to show you this in 3D. So here we have this part right here at the bottom is the base. Then we have the upper arm. On the top, we have the forearm. And this orange thing is the plug. Well, the base rotates in the C axis. The upper arm rotates with respect to the base. The forearm rotates with respect to the upper arm and finally the plug rotates the picked agent and as well we have this other agent which is moved by robot and we can drag and drop this here and it is the flowchart block to be used in conjunction with the robot agent it allows defining the logical movement and tasks that the robot will perform for the processed agent the other objects that you will see here in the library must not be used. Well, how to use the library once it's installed? You have to drag and drop the robot and you have to check that the presentation is shown here. And if it's not, you can click here on this icon and go here and click on show presentation. And to use the move by robot object, you can also drag and drop it and connect it to the block with your process logic. Well, we are going to create a simple model here. Well, so in this example, the boxes will arrive here in this node, and then the robot will move the boxes to this other node. So to do that, in the source, the boxes will arrive here in this node, and then we can use this move by robot to configure the robot, and the movements that the robot will do, a delay to watch the box here for a couple of seconds, and then the sync. So let's start with the robot, which is this icon. To define the characteristics of the robot, click on robot icon, which is here, and configure the parameters according to the desired visualization of the robot. Also, this agent must always be used as a single agent, which is this option, and not as a population of agents. Let's start 
with the initial angles. Here you can select the initial angles of the joints for the robot. The initial base angle, which is in degrees, is the initial angle of the base in the C-axis. Then we have the initial upper arm angle, which is also in degrees, and is the initial angle of the upper arm. Zero means no flexion of the joint, and is the same for the forearm. So if the upper arm and the forearm are zero, this will mean that the robot will be pointing to the sky. And we can recommend you some initial angles to make sure you work within these boundaries in order to avoid the robotic arm to move erratically, such as moving into itself, since we don't have collision detection. So for the base and the upper arm, you can select any angle between minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees is the same for this two. And we can recommend you to use here an angle between zero and 180 degrees for the forearm. Then we have the time step, which is in seconds, and this defines how often the animation positions are updated. A high time step makes the simulation run faster at the cost of making the animation look weird. So here we have 0 0.0333, which means 30 frames per second which is the same to do this. So this is a recommended time step because you will see the robot moving smoothly. And if you increment this number, for example, to one divided by 10, you will see the robot moving step by step. So the recommended time step is one divided by 30, which is the default option. Then we have the speed of each of the parts the base, forearm, and upper arm, and this will be the speed in which each one of these parts will move. And all of these are measured in degrees per second. So if you put here, for example, 360 degrees per second, it will mean that the base rotation will be one revolution per second. So you can configure this as you need. And then we have the scale, which is this part. Well, the original size of the forearm is 3.8 meters. We're going to call this FOS. And the new size of the forearm that we eventually could need will be 1.5 meters. And this will be FNS. So, the first step is to check the scale of the agent in which the robot icon is located. We want to know how many pixels are equivalent to 1 meter. For example, if the scale is 20 pixels to 1 meter, P is 20. Then we can use this formula to set our additional scale, where F and S, as we know, is 1.5. We have to multiply this by 20 and then divide it by FOS which is the original size of the forearm, and multiply it then by 10. This number 10 corresponds to the scale of the robot. You will always have to, to use this 10 here. So in this example will be 1.5 multiplied by 20, and then divided all by 3.8 multiplied by 10. And the result of this is almost 0 0.79. So in this example, our scale is one meter equals to 10 pixels. So we can go here to the robot and, and change the scale to the formula. So the additional scale will be 1.5, which is the new size of the forearm, multiplied by 10 because our current scale is 1 meters equal to 10 pixels and then divided by 3.8 multiplied by 10 which is the scale of the robot and as you can see here this is an easy ratio because for example if you if you want 1.5 and the original size is 3.8 
you can set here another thing which could be for example you can delete this you can multiply this by a new number which will be the additional scale of the robot for example in this case we needed almost a half the original size so we can put here 0 0.5 or if you put here 1 you will have the original size of the robot in meters if you put 5 you will have 5 times the original size of the robot and so on so in this case we are going to put 0 0.5 if you change this additional scale, you have to change as well the size of the robot. So you can copy this value and put it here in the presentation of the robot, clicking on the find explicitly and paste this value in the scale X, Y and Z. This value must be in each one of these scales in order to work well. Now we can go on to the move by robot block. This is the block you use in order to make the robotic arm operational and you can connect it to any process flow to move normal agents or material items if you are using the material handling library. The first parameter that we have here is the agent height. Here you can define the height of the agent in order for the robotic arm plug to position itself exactly on the top of the agent. Of course, your agent height should be equal to your animation height, otherwise this will not show a correct 3D animation. This value can be fixed for all agents or it can be dynamic, using your agent height parameters if you have created one. In this case, in the box agent, I have created a height parameter, which is uniform 1 to 10, and the C height will be this parameter. So here, for the move by robot, I can put first the type of the agent, because this block doesn't know which type is this agent. Then I can put here agent, which is our box, and select its height. But as you can see here, this is measured in meters. So I have to change these pixels to length units. Then we have the Q capacity. We can select a maximum Q capacity or a fixed number of agents in Q. This is similar to other blocks like the C's. And you can select as well if this mobile robot will have loading time or an unloading time. And this is associated to some actions such as unloading started and unloading finished that are shown if you want to use these times, as you can see here. If I select these two options, you can select the time of each one, and as well you can see here the actions. Now, the robot agent is the robot that you put here in the model, is this agent that you have to select. You can select it in this list, or as well clicking on it with this option. And the task priority, this defines from the robot perspective the priority of the process block with respect to others. If you have one robot and three move by robot process blocks, the robot will choose to move first the objects in the move by robot process with the highest priority. If all the priorities are the same, it will use FIFO. Note that you cannot choose the priority of agents. The priorities are related only to the process blocks. So if you put here the number two and you have another move by robot which has the priority of one, if we have two agents waiting here, the robot will choose to move the agent with this block first because we have the highest priority. And finally, the destination. Here you can put the destination and we only have the option to put it as a X, Y and Z coordinates. So if the destination is node 1, you can put node 1.getx and so on. And in this case, in on actions, I won't do anything 
but as you can see you can you can use agent if you need to do something in here and you can use this as any other process block with the difference that you have to specify your agent type for instance if you have a box agent moving through this block instead of agent that counter for example which can be like this you have to select first the type of the agent which is box but we don't have this variable in the box so i'm going to delete this and on release you can define if the robot stays where it is or if it goes back to the initial angles and that's all now we're going to watch what happens it will take a time to load this 3d object but it's not too much okay so we have here our robot but we have a problem the objective is too far and we can see here the details so this is because the robot is too short and the objective is too far so we can change here the scale of the robot we put here that we need half of the original size but we're going to change this to the original size so to do that we can select automatically calculated and as well here in the robot icon you can delete this and use this default option and now you can see the robot moving smoothly the robot is moving to the object and we'll take the object just in the center but I'm going to delete as well these times because we don't we don't need these times and as well I'm going to increment this base rotation speed to 15 degrees per second and here we have the robot moving the object from one point to another point and as we said before if you put the robot too close to another object these these two objects will probably collide because we don't we don't have collision detection but you can see here the robot working with these boxes.